let me ask you about the latest development regarding the team of scientists from WHO visiting China later this week. What can we expect from this trip? So this is a very important part of the scientific study into the origins of the virus. I'm sure, as you know and your viewers know, it's critical for the world to understand how did this virus jump from animals into humans so that we can stop it happening again during this outbreak, but also during outbreaks in the future, and that we can better understand what the threats from the animal kingdom to the human population are. Now, the, the international uh, scientists, 10 of them from 10 different countries, will be coming to work with their Chinese counterparts, and together they will look at the earliest cases reported in Wuhan and how those people may have got infected and all the other sort of areas, the, the laboratory studies, um, the serology studies, looking at the different animals. And together they will come up with some hypotheses, some questions, mm -hmm. the, the, the critical questions that need to be answered and they'll work out how to do that. Mm -hmm. So we won't have answers, but we will have good questions. Good questions are very first uh, steps uh, for important answers in the future. On the other side, uh, all the politics are involved uh, since the very beginning of uh, the reporting of the outbreak until today. So how are the scientists going to you know, tip that balance well uh, while doing their job? Well, I think as my director general has said, this is about science. Let's leave the politics out of it. This is not about finding someone to blame. This is about understanding what happened so that we can be better equipped as the world to prevent it happening again. Tell me more about what this trip could uh, look for. So that's a lot of different things and luckily we've got a lot of expertise both in the international team and in the local team. So you look at animal health, what's going on in the different animal populations, which animals are most similar in terms of this particular disease to humans. You look at, then you try to look at serology in the animals, are there antibodies? You look at uh, uh, the stories of the people who were first infected, where did they go, who were they in contact, what happened? You look at laboratory, uh, samples and laboratory studies and you put all this together you sit together you go through it systematically and put your minds together and say okay this is what we know so far what do we need to know and how are we going to find out those things dr harris we understand you know the example of missiles virus jumped from animal to human being 25,000 years ago and yet human beings only got to realize the disease uh, in recent decades. So how do we see, you know, how much outcome can we really have from um, investigative trips like this? It, not just measles, but with many of the different diseases that we know came from animals, we didn't get the answers right away. Now, having said that, our scientists are equipped, better equipped, are super smart, are really good at what they do. I mean, in a year, we've already got vaccines against That's this. Right. That's never happened. So we're in a place where we can understand, we can learn more, more quickly. And we've got this fantastic global collaboration and cooperation, which also hasn't happened before.